Okay. So, I am Charles. Uh, a lot of call me Charlie, Char, Chuck, dumbass, whatever. People call me all kinds of names. But, I run a, a shop here in Minnesota called Gray's Performance Repair. I do performance stuff like this car here. Um, I do general repair, all kinds of things. And what I want to do on this channel uh, is basically go over the process of doing all this with you and hopefully it becomes something that people will like and subscribe to and if you do great if you don't move on um, I just figured I'd give this whole YouTube thing a shot so here we have a 2006 Corvette um, this is a customer that's been a customer of mine for a very long time uh, he actually used to have a diesel that was kind of like Dino Queen or whatever you want to call it. He, he did a lot of dyno stuff with it and had some fun with it and made good power. It was broken a lot. Luckily, I didn't have to work on that because I was... I didn't have to work on it much because that was before I was his main repair guy. Um, I'm not into diesels. That's, diesels just aren't my thing. Uh, dirty. Many reasons. I'll do it if I have to, but many reasons I don't like diesels. Uh, besides, the shop is quite small, as you'll find out as you watch my videos. Um, fitting a diesel in here would be a task in itself if it's an actual pickup. Volkswagen, truck, yeah, no big deal. But pickups, no. Um, so anyway, I build these performance cars. Um, this particular car makes over 800 to the wheels. Um, it is a very fun car, to say the least. Um, but I built the motor about a year ago, and... Maybe, maybe a little over a year ago. But last year, he ran at Power Cruise, ran great. He had a good time. Um, but this year, he got it out. And he's driving around. He's working on the tune with a, with a new tuner, getting some things worked out. And randomly out of the blue, as he's sitting there idling, the motor just stops. So what the hell, you know? Goes to start it back up, and it just thunks. The starter just doesn't do anything except for make a thunk. Um, obviously not something you want to have happen to your own car. Uh, so he gets a towed because he finds out that the motor will only turn to a certain point and then come to a stop, which means there's mechanical damage. It's a manual, so he was able to just push it a little bit and then push it back and it stopped. So obviously there's a mechanical damage. He gets a camera down there. turns out there's a valve that looks like maybe it broke off and fell down in the cylinder and now it's wedged between the piston and the head. Um, luckily it happened at idle so our plan and hope is that I can just take it apart enough to pull one piston out. I already had the piston balanced. It's sitting at the balance shop. I gotta pick it up yet. Um, I kept all his specs from his motor before so I brought the piston, the piston weight and everything to the previous shop, the replacement piston, and we're in hopes that we can just put a piston in it and then upgrade the cylinder heads. He wanted to put better cylinder heads in. A little higher flowing, newer design. His were pretty worn out. We used them several times. Um, and on top of that, they were probably the original valves that were before he owned the, the vehicle. So he says, enough. I, I just don't trust it. They've been trimmed enough. Let's just be done with those cylinder heads and get some upgrades. This guy likes to make sure everything is as good as it can be within reason. Uh, in fact, I'll be upgrading, or not upgrading, but replacing the power steering pump, not because it's leaking, not because it's bad. He just wants me to replace it out of good measure. I don't necessarily fully support that idea unless a person gets an OE factory, GM factory uh, power steering pump. Uh, power steering is one of those things that if you've ever worked on a lot of power steering, like those A1 Cardone, the white box stuff, you guys gotta stay away from that. That stuff is nothing but trouble. At least from my personal experience, every time I replace power steering components with the white box stuff, I usually end up spending more time replacing it again than I do actually getting paid to do the work. So I really hate doing those systems. This guy bought the parts whatever, it's his choice. I recommend what I recommend and hopefully he chooses the right way. I didn't even look at the parts. They're sitting in my other room. Um, knowing him, he probably got the AC Delco factory pump, which is, would be great. Uh, but we're going to
going to be doing the pump. There's what's called a shark bar. It goes between and behind the back seats. It's for the multi-point harness that he got. I don't know if it's four or five, whatever point harness he got. Still have to look at that. Uh, he got a couple of seats. He's replacing these seats to a different seat because he's doing some road course stuff as well. He uh, decided he's kind of getting into the road course thing. And so we're replacing these seats. They're, they're in good shape from the outside, but the airbags, there's like a bolstering airbag that bolsters the sides for slipping and sliding. He's, they're, they're, they're sinking down. Like he'll pump them up and then they just lose their air. So he's replacing them to not have that issue anymore. Uh, what else? Well, I suppose there's a couple little things that we're doing, but we'll get to that throughout the video. Um, it might take more than one session on YouTube. I don't know. This is my first channel, so I don't know how long those those sessions are going to go for. I think it's 15 minutes or something like that. I don't know if you have to pay to get a longer one or whatever, but I'm going to do whatever the free basic is for now just to see how it works out. Um, yeah, let's get started. I'll grab the camera from where it's hanging up, and I'll show you, show you a quick view of the engine bay and what's going on with this car, and we'll go from there. Release usual. So here is the engine bay. I always, all my work is always extra clean. I always clean things up really well. Um, I don't like sending a customer out with a dirty engine bay. Uh, this happens to be one of the customers, which is like a lot of them, that once I clean it up like this, they keep it clean. This guy does a really good job of keeping it clean. So you can see that there's, I mean, this thing is spotless. It, it just, it looks beautiful. So, uh, we'll go around to the other side here. First thing I'm going to have to do with this project here is take the hood off. Um, once I got the hood off, I'm going to be covering up the fenders. I have some towels and masking tape that I use. Um, what I do is I have a couple of towels that I never use for anything else. And I take those towels and I use them just for this. And after I use it for this three, four, five times, then it turns into a shop rag and I don't use it for this again. Reason being is I don't want to have, you know, it's sitting up here on the fender. I don't want to have a piece of metal while I'm lifting something over, get caught on there. And then the next car I put it on, flip the towel over, leaves a huge scratch in the paint over the course of working on it. Um, that would be quite the, the bummer for the customer. Uh, now this one, I am doing a a bar paint thing. There's a there's actually a bar up here that I had to put in to allow a little more airflow into it. Um, customer wanted me to do something there, so I did that. And he's got a little spot of rust that showed up. I must have not got the the rattle can on there very good. It's just it's hidden under the the body, so I wasn't really worried about it. But he saw it, so I'll have to hit that with a little little can quick. Uh, clean it up as best I can because obviously you don't want your car to rust so it must have just missed something no big deal but if I decide to pull the bumper off depending on where it is I'll do that otherwise we'll get working on it here and get it done the back of the car is gonna be covered up by a car cover that he brought with the vehicle um, other than that I suppose let's get started I'll pause the video I'll come back when I make some progress Okay, so here we are. I got a couple things set up. I uh, was unable to remove the hood yet. I don't have anybody to help me with that. And last thing I want to do is drop a hood. Um, got the back of the car covered. Got the fenders taken care of, so I don't have to worry about those. Once the hood is off, I will take care of the front bumper because I'm going to be leaning over that, obviously. Uh, first thing I did, disconnect the battery. Disconnect the harness. Move them out of the way as best I can. Uh, now this one on this side here There is a hose. I'll go walk over. There's a hose on the other side Right here for bleeding off air in the cooling system the Hose is actually going over top of the wires on the back side here 
so I will have to take that hose off but in order to do that I need to drain the coolant system um, it's gonna leak all the all over and make a mess otherwise and I don't like dealing with a mess so I'm gonna do that next just pull the drain plug let it drain out and uh, I'll let you catch up in a little bit we'll just kinda go step by step until I can do uh, I don't know maybe a time-lapse at some point here just do a time-lapse video that'd be kinda nice if I could start doing that I think um, any suggestions you have for these videos uh, I will keep going as I am today just kinda do this a little bit here and there uh, videos just to let you know how far I got what I did how I did it if necessary um, for instance lifting this car in the hoist it's one that's really low to the ground I literally have to take a 2x4 I actually use that one there and on this side of the car my, my floor is a little uneven on this side of the car, I have to take the 2x4, set it down there, put something on top of it, and then pry up on the vehicle. And I usually use those 2x4s there. Pry up on the vehicle just enough to get it lifted so I can put the arms under it and get the car in the air. Uh, that should be it for now. I'll come back in just a second. Okay, got the car in the air. Um, <clears throat> just figured quick uh, I got the drain plug open I wanted to show you how tightly these cars fit in here but actually these Corvettes are just about perfect I can actually comfortably stand underneath them uh, this is a vaulted ceiling garage I don't know how well you can see me there but I am actually standing straight up I have no knee buckling or anything it just barely clears me it's perfect so uh, give you a quick glance under this car here He's got a aftermarket aluminum radiator, big oil cooler lines, uh, what else? There's the charge pipe for the supercharger, damper, the headers full exhaust. Uh, got some suspension upgrades on this thing uh, that I did. He's got full urethane bushings, upgraded everything up, fully adjustable shocks, almost forgot about that. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, we did the trans brace. Actually upgraded the transmission. The differential assembly, we did that. Transmission and differential at the same time. Um, that was a big expense for him. He actually bought a built unit. Uh, customized his ratio. Got the fuel system, which is a interesting setup. I've been, this is one of the first ones I did. Uh, we're finding out what does and what doesn't work. The one nice thing about this setup is these lines going across like like that actually act as a fuel cooler to an extent, which is a bonus, of course. Um, what else? Magnet on the pan, just for good measure, you know, race car things. Uh, oh, we upgraded the leaf spring, which brings me to another thought. He's getting a leaf spring for the rear. He got the wrong one first, but he wants to upgrade the rear. Go to a little bit st stiffer spring for road coursing. All right, so as far as how this thing fits in the garage, I'll show you that quick. That is a shelf that the back of the car is close to. If I get that car back further, it's, it's about, hard to tell in the video, but that's about five inches away right now, maybe six. Um, if I get the car back farther, I'm actually able to lift it up on the hoist all the way up you can see the fan Let's see if I can tip this up high enough the fan still has a ways to go I don't know if you can tell that on the video I doubt it but the fan easily clears these Corvettes however this is where my issue comes in it's where the hood and headlight fender area come really close to this other shelf so there's the back shelf that I mentioned before and here is the front shelf where I store some stuff and that's where it gets pretty tight so the car actually sits really well as long as it's one of these Corvettes it, they, they sit so nice in this garage I couldn't be any more thankful especially since I have what, four or five of these customers now that, that have these high performance bits I got another one outside um, that one I might actually do a video on but that'll have to be a disclosed video. I won't have to. I won't be able to show any of the names on the car because I did not build that car. Uh, but it is coming to me now. B 
because of what the other builder did. So I'll go over that in another video probably. Okay, first thing I pulled, uh, major thing that I pulled was a supercharger. Obviously I got all the intake and charge pipe and whatever out of the way there. Uh, I popped up the video here quick because I want to show you something that is really critical on these supercharged cars like this. Um, a lot of times you have to shim these superchargers to get the belt to align properly so it doesn't shred the belt. So you'll see there's a little shim here, it's really thin. That actually goes right to this spot here, there's a bolt hole there. And then this shim here. Now when I shim this one I also trim down a couple of these towers to make it work properly. Um, so I didn't have such a god awful amount of shims. There is also those two washers there. Now those go to the water pump. Those washers have to be there in between this bracket and the water pump. So if you screw up those shims, uh, the guy will shred a belt as soon as he revs it up. It might not happen right away, but as soon as he revs it up, it will. Uh, so you got to make sure you, you get that engine up to RPM before you send it back to the customer with uh, these specific cars. Uh, they do like to shred belts. It's amazing how little alignment it takes to throw it off. And since we're putting new cylinder heads on this one, I will have to test it. There's, there's no question because uh, the cylinder head could reposition where that bracket actually sits. These two pegs right here and right here go up against the cylinder head. These go against the water pump. The water pump is not going to be removed, at least I hope not, uh, assuming I can do just one piston. As far as the rest of it goes, there's a couple little things I suppose I could touch on. This guy has a vent system. Normally there's like a little metal pipe. It's kind of a cheesy thing with a hose clamp hooked to it. Um, this is a system that allows the the boiled water, I forget what it's called, there's a specific name for it, I can't remember off the top of my head, but this is on all four corners now. So the stock system only has it on the front two. One there and one here. This one has it on all four corners. There's this hose that runs to the back corner here and another hose that runs to this corner here to keep it clean so we have less hoses. Um, and that helps bleed out the cooling system. Make sure there's no air in there so you don't end up with hot spots. You know, gives the motor a little more longevity. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I'll just continue ripping and tearing. And you can see I didn't get the hood off yet. Still haven't had any help. Uh, I gotta get somebody in here to help me do that because it'd be nice if I could actually bend over the front of the car. But it is what it is. I'll uh, go for the intake next, and then I'll be tackling the alternator, and I'll get back to you in a couple of seconds. Okay, I got all the brackets and whatnot out of the way. Uh, pulled the valve covers, as you can see. Uh, intakes off, etc. Um, what I'm going to do, well, I suppose I'll show you this first. So when I, when I take stuff off, I kind of, there's a supercharger, pull that off first. That I kind of just set things left to right top to bottom in order as I pull it apart. Um, that way it's kind of a little easier for me to rem remember how to efficiently put it together and I always lay it out in a way that the bolts are easy for me to figure out. That way I don't have to try and remember everything and I can concentrate on the job more so than remembering things. Um, so what I'm going to do is start taking one of the heads off. I'm going to make an attempt at a time lapse video thing here. Or maybe I'll just do the full thing if it doesn't take me too long. Um, I'm going to do the passenger side head first. Uh, I think the bad valve is on the driver's side. I think he said cylinder 7. Um, I'm not positive. I can't see it through the intake ports. I guess I didn't look real closely at number 7 because I couldn't really see in there. And I guess it wouldn't hurt to take a look. Well, I have the camera on, but let's take a look here and see if I can see anything. I don't know about you, but I can't tell anything. Hell, we can only see a little over half the valve anyway, so it could be on the other side. Who knows? We'll find out when I pull it apart. But regardless, I'm going to take this side off first just because... My camera mount is up in this corner here, and I don't want to remount it yet until I figure out what I'm going to do. I'm literally using a cell phone for this video until uh, 
they go well. If they go well and you request it, it you know, feel free to make requests on what you want to see. Um, if there's anything extra I should be doing, anything that I should skip, uh, I am open to all options. Um, just let me know in the comments and we'll go from there. So I'll set this phone up here. Zip out all the header bolts. Dipstick bolts. Put them together, lay them on the table, next in line. Sorry, I got a little sniffle and kind of sick today. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but can't stop working, gotta make a dollar. Alright, starting the header bolts. I'm actually going to grab the air ratchet here and make it go a little quicker for the video. Normally hate that thing, it's so damn loud, but I'll do it for you guys. Might have to muffle it on the video. Where is my adapter? There it is. Definitely gonna have to lift this thing up to loosen the head or down on the bottom side of the car. Otherwise, I can't twist it out of the way to get the head bolts, and I'll do that off camera just so I don't waste a bunch of time. Pull the rockers off next. I already cracked them loose. take loose are these small head bolts um, 
they're not necessarily high load. Where did my ratchet go now? So you pull those off first so you don't wreck them when you pull the other ones loose. Well, that's always lovely, losing my ratchet. There it is. the washers off of there. Yeah, I got uh, little boxes that I like to use for these things. Handy little magnetic flip open box. Perfect for projects like this. Now we gotta take off the big bolts. They're nuts. And this has head studs. Start on the outside. So we go in a little bit at a time. Keep from warping the heads, because just because these heads are getting replaced doesn't mean they're bad. Somebody else might want them with a lesser build. Do it in kind of a crisscross pattern. Minimize warpage that way. Almost completely loose now. See, I don't need any leverage anymore. There we go, they're all loose. Fancy little socket here. Take them off like that. See any freezes coming out? I should probably get a catch pan under there. It's nice to not have a giant mess on the floor. That's always a terrible plan. I'll still end up with a mess regardless of how big that pan is. Somehow it won't catch it. Just the nature of how things work. If any of you uh, watching have worked on cars, you know how that is, I'm sure. Oh, this one, the stud came out with it. Might be a little ding in the threads from, I don't know, the header or something. Not the end of the world. It's honestly nice to have those out anyway. The head comes off easier, but these cars this side does easily clear. The other side is pretty tough if you have head stuff in it. Yet.
because they're kind of tricky sometimes. You got to take this magnet and kind of go back and forth in order to get them off of that stud. Or pull the stud out, that works too. Oh, that one came out easy. Now on the LS motors, the bottom ones are external on the head. And usually, you got one that's stuck here. You usually just pull them up. Yeah, I know. That's a great hammer, right? wedge itself in there. So the ARP stud lube was holding it down like a vacuum. Okay, there's all those guys. See what this this side looks like and how big of a mess I can make. Head gasket's kind of giving me trouble here, but I'll get it. on this side, so I doubt this is the side with the problem. This gasket out of the way, maybe. Wow, it's really on there. of these dowels. They'll get stuck in things and then you'll lose them. Throw them out with the gasket. Don't want to do that. That's uh, the lineup dowel for the head. I'll run the camera over here. I'll show you what I got to do first. So the first thing I get to do is get all that antifreeze out of there. Yay! As you take heads off, the antifreeze just kind of ends up everywhere, but it is what it is. Nothing you can do about it. Now these pistons are coated. I don't know if I'll be able to... There, you can see it there. Just got a little bit of carbon on there. There we go. That coating is Cerakote Piston Coat. Um, really good stuff. I've been having pretty good luck with it. And I'll go over videos like that if you want me to do the ceramic coating process I do it here um, I just did the piston the replacement piston for this and the cylinder heads that are for this and you'll see the the brand new stuff when I bring that back to put it on so okay let's continue here I got uh, the header loose moved back all the studs are off or not the studs, but the nuts for the studs. Um, I decided to give it a shot without pulling the studs. We'll see how it goes here. But I noticed something. And I guess I'll show you the other head first to show you what I'm seeing here. But Okay. When it comes to engines, especially two-valve engines, the intake valve is way bigger than the exhaust valve. Um, and generally speaking, these LS motors particularly... Uh, they fail right where the intake valve is, or that's where the, the valve that fails, because it's so much bigger, they tend to, to fracture easier. There's a really thin area on its way down, and they just fracture easier. What I thought I was going to find was a crack across it like this, where a part of it broke off. That's what the last car I had was. That was actually a titanium valve motor. It was an LS7. Um... This one is not that, it's just the three, so it's got the stainless, probably Ferrera. Now there are three grades of Ferrera valves. 
Um, I never put valves in this motor. We just did grinds. They were always what appeared to be in good shape. Uh, so we don't know the history on the valves themselves. But I noticed something when I was pulling, or once I got it pulled apart, before I pulled the head off. I don't know if I'll be able to show this. I'll try going from the other side. There we go. I'm sure I can see it this way. See that, that center valve? That is the exhaust valve. It's sitting low. See how those two, intake and exhaust, are level, level, level. This one, the exhaust valve, is sitting low. And that is cylinder number seven. So I know for a fact there's something wrong with that valve. So I'm going to set you up where I've been hanging you out. Hanging you out to dry here, you know. There we go. And I'm going to pull that head off quick. And then I'll bring it back over there to take a look. Hopefully this one comes off easier than the last one. Nope, guess it's doing the same damn thing. Alright. Go figure. Boy, these gaskets stick pretty good. Quite impressive, really. I'm gonna get a screwdriver on there. These heads are needing work anyway. Just real carefully pry it so I don't leave a giant grout gouge. Pull that gasket off the head. Obviously, don't want to pry at the block because I don't want to scratch the block, but the head, eh, it's gotta get milled anyway. screwdriver between the head gasket and the head, trying not to actually cry on the main surface of the head. There we go. Wow. That was really on there. Okay, go down a little bit further. Itself, right where that fire ring is on this thing. There it is. It's the other side. We got the one side right away, but the other side is a little tougher. I think I might have got it now. I think I got it past it. There it is. Alright. Let's see what we have. Does not look good. In fact, it doesn't even look like a valve went in there. Something else got in there. The question is, what the hell is it? All right. All right. We'll get the carnage on the piston here. There's some pieces down here. So you can figure out what this thing is. Oh, the seat fell out. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yep, I've I actually had a set of LS3 heads recently that I was going to do ceramic coating, and when heating them up in the oven, the seats fell out. I think that was the intake seat though. This is the exhaust seat, I think. Oh no, it is the intake. Holy sh snikey. Yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, I had my valve screwed up. That is the intake valve. Okay. Yeah, so the intake valve seat actually came out of this thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do real quick is put this up here, grab my Bell spring compressor and pull that valve out. Pretty sure his springs are light enough I can do it with my cheap crappy valve spring compressor. I don't need to use the drill press. Because he doesn't have a horrible amount of lift. Let's find out. Oh. 
stuck. Get a hammer to break it loose. The keeper is seized in there. Imagine that with a bunch of stress on it. Just a little brass hammer. Just give it a little tap. A little, little love tap. Dippy dippy. There it is. No, it's free. Sorry again for the volume. I'm sure it's quiet. I'll have to speak up. Okay, bell spring off. Ooh, bell is stuck. Let's, there it goes. Let's take a look. Okay, being this is the second head I've had this happen to on an LS3 now. Luckily, the one I didn't put in the car because it happened before then. I won't be trusting LS3 cylinder heads much anymore. I'm gonna see if this still has the same casting badge as the other one. The other one had like a battery symbol on it. And I think this one does too. Yes, it does. All right, let's find out or show you. Okay, see that symbol there? It looks like a little battery. I assume this casting number is a pile of crap. Um, being that's the second one now that I've had have that happen. Sorry, I gotta set you down. Grab a rag here. Great, great footage of a red table. I bet you like that. Just looking at a red light. Alright. So here is the valve. I can't even pull it out because it's it's stuck. Like I'll have to use a punch or something. But it's not at all wobbly, right? That's good yet. Just just pound her back in. She'll, she'll run. You don't need a seat. What's a seat do? Those are worthless. Oh, can't even push it back in there. Yep, that's it's stuck. I'll have to hit it with a punch. Not that it really matters. Well, there be what happened. I am going to tell the customer that I had the seats fall out on his other vehicle. That uh, he should be damn glad I discovered that. The first time because holy cow that would have been horrible for him this guy got lucky it happened at idle hopefully it didn't do any damage to the cylinder wall guess i could take a look at that quick while while i got you on the camera here just wipe this guy down of course gravity always flows down this is a v8 so all the damage is on the one side where is my light there it is Okay, this guy got lucky. I'll see if I can show you that. There's one little nick there at the very top above the top ring. That will not cause any problems whatsoever. This guy got very lucky, so he will get a new piston. Um, measured out balance, I told you about that earlier, I think. Uh, he will get a new piston. He will get... The bearings inspected, might as well while I'm in there, I'm sure they're fine, the oil looked mint. And obviously, new cylinder heads. Wow, that's beautiful.